You've just finished school and for the first time in your life, you have all these options in front of you. You could go to university and specialize in a subject to have a higher chance of working in that industry. You could do an apprenticeship and learn hands-on and then maybe get a job at the end of that. Or you could go your own way, start a business and just figure stuff out as you go. Now, I've had experience with all three of these outcomes after I left school. So let's talk through and hopefully figure out what you're gonna do with all this time you have. But just like last week, I have to do all this stuff. So I'm gonna take you with me. Also, big thanks to the subscribe button for sponsoring this video. Just click it. It's pretty easy, huh? Pretty much as soon as you start your last two years of school, you're hit with the open day invites, course day invites, and so many other events from universities trying to get you to apply. After that, most of us have to apply halfway into our second year of sixth form to get into these universities. You could get successful on conditional offers, which means they'll just take you, or you get conditional offers, which is when you have to buckle down, focus on exams and results to hopefully get into the educational institute that you want to get into. It's really important that you pick something that you don't mind putting in years of time and effort. So when you do get a degree, you'll be more likely to use it. Some universities also offer placements, so which means you have a higher chance of actually working in the industry that you want to be because while you were studying, you got a placement working in an actual office. So far, so good, right? But as with all three of these options, there's always pros and cons. So the first thing, it costs a lot of money, at least 9,000 a year if you live in England. Secondly, it's a big time commitment. You're looking at minimum three years to so make sure it's something you actually want to pursue and you care about at least a little bit so you don't quit early on. And lastly, of course, there are no guarantees. Even after all that time, work, effort, stress, money, all that, you're not guaranteed to get a job as soon as you leave, but that's university rounded up. Now, we're gonna talk about doing your own thing and being an entrepreneur kind of Let's say instead of university, you're bursting with business ideas and want to go do your own thing. What then? Well, this is by far the most unpredictable route, but it can also be the most lucrative high risk, high reward type situation. For me personally, while I was at university, I started taking more time to focus on videos, editing, making them, all that kind of thing. And eventually it turned out my internet stuff was more worthwhile doing than me staying at university. And it just made more sense to focus on my internet venture than carry on with uni. But with this pathway, that's just one of the many ways you can go about starting your own journey because is you could sell stuff, you could make stuff, you could have a business where you're consulting other people. There's so many possibilities. You can do whatever you want, but it will take more time and effort. Because at the end of this, all you really need is ideas, dedication, and grit, because you'll face a lot of rejection. But as long as you keep moving forward, you'll probably be fine doing your own thing. But even if it doesn't completely work out for you, you've worked on yourself and it will open you up to so much more than you could ever imagine. I took a year out of uni and in that year basically changed my life, got a lot done outside of uni and the work I had done for myself got me an apprenticeship at the BBC. And finally, apprenticeships. I've wanted to talk about this since the start of the video, but I had to save it to the end because even though I'm not trying to be, I obviously am going to be a little bit biased. I think a lot of modern apprenticeships are really a good mix of work, education, and working on yourself. Plus, they're funded, so you don't really have to pay for anything and you kind of get paid on top of that. So it's, it's, it's nice. Not to mention, if you do well enough, you will pretty much just get a job at the end of your apprenticeship. And it's just a nice way to kickstart your career wherever you want to be working because you already know the people, you already know the work, you got a certification out of it, hopefully. There are drawbacks, as with the other two options. In between learning and working, you won't really have as much time as your friends who maybe went to university and are doing all the fun stuff like Freshers Week because you're working and then you gotta go study and you might have to go to the gym and do like life stuff so you just don't have enough time. Anyway, at times it does sometimes just feel like your work and sleep and eating and then just repeating constantly and also socially speaking you're not really gonna have the same experience as freshers and all that stuff because it might not be as many apprentices as you think that work with you and especially if you've had to relocate and move somewhere else so i moved from london to glasgow you're not gonna know anyone and a lot of the people you work with might be a lot older than you and it's just it is more difficult to make friends i'd say than uni but Still very good. So we've gone through uni, starting your own stuff and making a business and then apprenticeships. All three are valid options. Just do what feels right. Think about these things because you don't want to do what I did, kind of where you went to uni for a while, did your own thing for a while and then ended up where you're supposed to be. Consider all the options, make a pros and cons list for you personally and you will be fine. Anyway, that's my roundup. I'm going to go finish cooking and good luck. See you next week.